There you have it, folks. The Red Bull show has finally come to an end. The unbeatable Max Verstappen and the rest of Red Bull couldn't keep their impressive winning streaks alive at the 2023 Singapore Grand Prix. Their perils began in qualifying, which brought an unexpected twist as both of their cars faced difficulties and failed to advance beyond Q2 at the notoriously challenging street circuit. Because of this, Verstappen had a challenging start from the 11th position, but managed to climb to 5th place. Meanwhile, Sergio Perez started from 13th on the grid and finished in 8th. Both Perez and Verstappen chose to kick off the race on hard tires before switching to mediums, allowing them to make progress up the field, but they fell short of mounting a podium challenge. Verstappen, in the end, finished right behind Charles Leclerc, marking the conclusion of their remarkable winning streaks in Formula 1 history, both for the team and the driver. Their decision to start the race on hard tires, potentially giving them an advantage in terms of race pace against their competitors, was thwarted by an ill-timed safety car. This unfortunate timing left Verstappen and Sergio Perez vulnerable when the race resumed. When the safety car made its appearance around one-third of the race distance, Red Bull made a strategic choice to remain on the track. They aimed to pursue a different strategy compared to their competitors, considering that the safety car had already disrupted the potential benefits of starting the race on the hard compound tires. Verstappen and Perez found themselves in a challenging position as their rivals, equipped with significantly fresher tires, effortlessly passed them. Red Bull still had to make a pit stop, which further complicated matters. When they eventually did switch to medium tires, they ended up falling towards the rear of the pack. In the latter part of the race, their pace improved, allowing Verstappen to mount a comeback and secure 5th place, narrowly missing out on 4th place as Charles Leclerc maintained his position. Verstappen shared his thoughts with Sky F1 regarding the safety car and virtual safety car interventions, which were triggered by incidents involving Logan Sargent and Esteban Ocon. He said, I had quite a bit of fun out there, but two times, the safety car didn't help us. The first one was at the wrong point, and then the second one also came again at the wrong point for us so a bit of a shame, but I had fun on the second stint. I think we were quite fast on that medium compound. We went on the alternate strategy, and then you need to hope that it all works in your favor. Today, I think it didn't, but that happens sometimes. Overall, the car was a little bit better in the race again, which I guess is the most important. It was brought to his attention that he had been overtaken on the track for the first time in 2023. In response, the Dutchman shrugged his shoulders regarding the statistic. For me, these stats, I don't care about that. This is normal. I was on old tires, so there's not much you can do. When asked whether he considered Red Bull's performance in the Singapore Grand Prix as a one-time setback, Verstappen responded by saying, I think we'll be quick in Suzuka. We really have to understand this weekend. But Suzuka is of course a completely different track layout. In the aftermath of the race, Perez was summoned to appear before the stewards due to two incidents involving Alex Albon. One pertained to overtaking under the virtual safety car, and the other involved a non-track collision. Perez explained his perspective on these incidents, but ultimately received a 5 second time penalty, which did not change his 8th place finishing position. Additionally, he was issued a penalty point. The Mexican driver said, Not a nice day for us. It was quite difficult, quite tricky. With the Alex incident, I think nothing there, a racing incident. Also, with the safety car, I was ahead of him and Alex overtook me under the safety car, but the system couldn't tell us at the time that I was ahead. But anyway, it's how things are, and now let's look forward to Japan. I think our performance in Singapore was circuit dependent, and we should be a lot stronger when we're in Japan hopefully. Red Bull had been banking on a safety car period to reinvigorate their chances at the Singapore Grand Prix, but according to Christian Horner, the timing of its arrival couldn't have come at a worse time for the team. Telling reporters, I think we understood a lot more in the race, and the pace of the car came much more back to what we expected. Coming here, we expected to have closer competition, but I think it took us a bit by surprise just how far out we were on Friday, and I think that we were just not in the right operating window for the car, particularly over a single lap, and when you're not there, then the tires feel horrible. Everything just doesn't work. So I think we got a very good steer in the race. I think that we saw, particularly in the latter stint, that Max's pace was very, very strong. Unfortunately in the race, by starting on the hard, we took, if you like, a strategic gamble. And the best way of that race paying us off is if you get an early safety car, or a safety car sort of later into the race. Now, the lap that the safety car came out in was probably strategically the worst possible lap for the strategy that we were on, because it gave the cars ahead of us a free stop. 
At the same time, whilst giving us track position, it made us take the restart with tires that are very hard to heat up again, having done well over 20 laps. The safety car completely screwed it for us. So then Max was obviously picked off by the guys that have had the free stop, and then we had to take a pit stop under normal racing conditions, which then drops you another 23 seconds behind with that. So all considered, the recovery that we had, and the pace that we had, particularly in the latter part of the race, to be 0.2 seconds behind Charles at the finish line, was a very strong race. Max Verstappen seemed to be in a rather grumpy mood following the Singapore qualifying session, which might come as a surprise for a driver who seems to have the title secured. One might deduce that Red Bull is feeling the impact of the FIA's clampdown on flexi wings, which could be causing some challenges for the team. These are the insights shared by former Ferrari team manager Peter Windsor in response to Red Bull's double Q2 exit at the Marina Bay circuit on Saturday night, who said this about Christian Horner's star driver. We didn't see the whole lap, but I heard the radio transmission from Max afterward, which was pretty grumpy. Really overly so, I think, for a guy who's got this year's championship sewn up, who's had a brilliant car underneath him all year. It was along the lines of, did you see that? It was just impossible to drive. It was over the top, really. I thought of that reaction, but not happy. Regarding Sergio Perez, the 71-year-old commentator said that he spun like a relatively inexperienced driver when he lost control at turn one. Sergio Perez just lost the whole thing at turn one in a very inelegant spin, the type a rather inexperienced driver would have. It was obviously just no front end from his point of view at all, so neither of them made it through in a Q3. The fact that both Red Bull cars were eliminated in Q2 raises the question of what went alright with the team. This is puzzling, considering that they've had the strongest car on the grid thus far. It's possible that the FIA's recent crackdown on flexi wings, which took effect in Singapore, could also be a contributing factor, saying, I was thinking about that comment from Christian Horner about how they're not about how they're not very good on 90 degree corners. What he means, and really think about it, is that a 90 degree corner isn't really a corner. It's just stop and then turn and go. It's therefore not flattering all the things that the Red Bull is really good at, which is medium speed long corners, high speed long corners. They can't use any of that stuff. But that doesn't mean to say that they should be any worse than anybody else through 90 degree corners. I think that's the point. I suppose they've never really been in this position under that much pressure, with also the added problem of the shift issue on Max's car. And on top of that, the popular supposition that the tougher flexi wing regulations introduced this race are hurting Red Bull more than any other team. Very easy to draw that conclusion. Personally, I think we should wait until after Suzuka to see if that really is the case. What do you think? Are the new flexi wing regulations the key to finally stopping Red Bull's insurmountable dominance? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell for the hottest F1 news.